Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. And first of all, thank you for your presentation. It was really nice to hear insights uh, from you. And uh, now we are proceeding to the part with joint seminar, and we wanted to talk in general about media part as an independent and sustainable model in an era of digital revolution. So my name is Sofia, I'm from Ukraine. This is Antonia and Leo from Germany. And now let's proceed to telling the story of this presentation. So, uh, we wanted to give you like a, a small overview about the media in France in general. So, like to begin with, everyone uh, I believe watched Asterix and Obelix, and there was like this metaphor about like this country of Gaul and how it was invaded by Romans. But there was like this one village that was able to resist, and this is a bit similar to how media part is operating around all of this uh, oligarch controlled media um, uh, spheres and companies like here we found like a graph about like the ownership structures how everything is hidden and who owns what and now to the next slide we wanted to show like an example that actually the system in general is not that transparent and everything is complex and like in order to figure who owns what uh, newspaper you really have to dig through all the uh, companies and then voila you can find like some of the oligarchs we even found a statistic that for instance 51 percent of the owners of the print and online media they are owners from the financial and insurance services sector and uh, now we wanted to uh, like review shortly media part next slide even though we already like uh, have heard like uh, main information from madame Foto, we wanted to elaborate on their mission again that there we have like this um, uh, mission of becoming like a francis platform for uh, like quite transparent journalism with investigative reports what made them quite unique in 2008 there are also like some of the main cases that were presented and also uh, the we wanted to uh, introduce Advi Planel which is like one of the co-founders of the paper and here we have like this picture of him where he emphasizes that actually like uh, newspapers and journalism it shouldn't be like that much about like freedom of journalism about writing uh, whatever they want but it's a right of uh, citizens to have an access to uh, um, a, a nice uh, information which is quite like uh, supported by facts and now to the next slide we presented um, in general the, the structure of the ownership so basically 42 percent it's the four co-founders and the other ones uh, are um, like some of the partner investors however we wanted to emphasize again media parts economic independence which is guaranteed by this control of its capital and in the next slide we uh, found like the structure of media part in general so there is this uh fund for a free press throughout which they uh, hold uh, the um the money and here uh, we can observe how most of the uh, like the money they are uh, collected through donations of their readers and we even put a graph how like the amount of subscribers was rising throughout the years uh, reaching to 200,000 um, of followers which can be estimated like around third most popular online media in France. Exactly, and I will continue to talk a bit about the digital era or digital revolution as you pointed it out. Um, so I think I would like to spin the narrative a bit further of uh, this uh, Gaulian Asterix and Obelix um, idea that we had at the beginning. Um, because Media Part was founded in 2008, we had still a bit different times of the internet. I read an, um, an interview with a colleague of yours who said it was still time of the anarchic internet in 2008. As you already pointed out, you are not relying on digital advertisement, no, nor you create data profiles of the audience. So that's differing a lot from other newspapers or digital platforms. But as um, of your very unique way, of um, 
presenting your news, you also got into a taxation fight, especially at the beginning of your times, where um, the authorities were claiming that you would be a digital media platform instead of being a digital newspaper that would give you lower tax rates. And uh, maybe that would be our village, whereas in the rest of France, as I think throughout the globe in the past 15 years, um, GAFAM really took over. Um, you can see here Google, Meta and Facebook concentrate the highest audience share, especially in the advertisement sector in uh, France. That makes up 70% already of the audience. Um, but that also led in 2021 to sanctions for Google because they had monopolistic advertisement behavior and they had to pay 220 million euros. Nevertheless, as Mediapart discovered in 2022, um, the GAFAM is still very present, especially with uh, Macron, as far as I uh, read it correctly, and that there is still a huge lobby and Macron is still very aligned with uh, uh, GAFAM in that sense. So we also wanted to talk a bit about opportunities of the nowadays digital times instead of 15 years ago. Um, so, as you already pointed out, uh, we have new forms of participation. Your blog is a very good example for it. But of course, we can all choose our media. Like, we have access to media, we can choose what we want to read. Nevertheless, of course, we also see numbers that a larger share than ever, ever opt out and choose a more passive way of receiving mm -hmm. news and receiving information but also for investigative journalism, you have um, new roles, especially for digital collaborative um, investigations. So you can literally collaborate way easier internationally as well. Um, you also have a new emergence of data journalism that uh, can reveal hidden truths. And um, also you have the increasing reachability of your audience, as you already pointed out, that you can use also GAFAM to reach a new or um, more of the audience and on the downside of course um, you have a strong concentrated digital platform power and um, there's this ongoing debate whether this would lead to a crisis of journalism due to these ad-driven business models or whether this can actually also enable more investigative journalism i think here in literature the people are not still <laughs> too but maybe you have an answer to that and um, this concentrated platform power of course also leads to consolidation cost cutting and then also undermines the diversity of the news. So we tend to read a lot of the same stuff over and over again. Um, also, I think that was quite evident in the past years, the rise of dis and misinformation operations. Um, I think that was especially evident in COVID-19 times, but also in political elections. Um, we have also due to digital media, the political polarization, the promotion of hate, um, a problem of filter bubbles that we tend to stay in our own informational bubbles and cannot really um, appreciate the ways of diversified news and um, can also be victims of hyper-targeted advertisement. And last but not least, um, we see a decreasing media freedom all over the globe. And this can also be systemic, um, like digital news can also systemically be used um, by political institutions um, and plan energy and connectivity short uh, cut down, uh, cut outs and shutdowns um, so that people cannot access information or distribute information. Thank you. And now that we've kind of uh, set the stage and established the environment in which uh, media in France and in a digital era are operating, we would like to step back even more and um, take like a bit more abstract um, perspective on media and society and specifically ask the question how you would say a fact becomes actually a news. And uh, we would like take uh, two perspectives, uh, one internal and one external perspective on how um, this might be impacted or even influenced and uh, restricted. So the first one comes from a paper called Sociology of Media Ownership by Benson. And here I would, um, off the paper, they introduce a couple of concepts, but the most important one would be the motivation to publish a particular news. If you have a fact or an information, why would you publish it? And um, they introduce four different kinds of motivations. 
And even though um, you claim and you said in your presentation to be independent of any powers and 100% independent, you at the same time uh, presented your um, political views or your political agenda to a certain extent. So I would argue that you have a certain uh, motivation to publish news according to uh, political instrumentalism. And um, I will um, um, explain that, uh, I will um, repeat the question again afterwards, but here I would be interested in, um, even though you want to present facts and at the same time have a lot certain political stance, how do you uh, marry the two um, ideals, which at some point uh, can be conflicting, especially if we look at the choice of facts that you present. And even if we um, assume that you have a certain economic independence, you still have to, um, you said it yourself, um, have a certain motivation to um, publish information and uh, media um, news that your audience likes. So even if you don't have uh, particular information about the user profile, you will still see that your um, audience reacts to certain um, 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 articles. For example, if they desubscribe, um, and then you you uh, you have a certain indirect interest to publish uh, news that your readers actually read. So, um, what prevents you from reproducing your audience's opinions and biases? And um, so, this was kind of an internal filter. So now I would like to look at the external filters onto media and refer to, um, I, as uh, many of you know, know it, like manufacturing consent by uh, Noam, Noam Chomsky and Herman. And they introduce five filters that operate from the society onto media outlets and um, restrict what kind of raw news or um, uh, fact, like information, become actual news um, at the end. And while you said that uh, advertisements don't really play a role, um, and profit orientation to a certain degree probably also less than in other companies. There are still three or let's say two and a half um, filters that also may apply to your a newspaper and we would be interested in what you say, uh, especially about this fourth one. Well, uh, the third one is uh, reliance on news that you have to produce a certain news stream, even if you may not have super relevant information at a point because your, your readers expect a certain news stream. But the, the most important one for us is um, the fear of retaliation. You can only um, fight so many legal fights at a time. So how do you manage in, a, in an environment of a political um, opposition? How do you choose um, which articles to publish if you know that you have to fear retaliation from your political opponents put, uh, potentially? Um, so this leads us to a couple of questions which are derived um, from the different segments of our presentation. Um, so the first one is Adwi Plenel, um, because we realized that he meant to resign in 2017. He announced so publicly, but he never did. So he's still in, in charge. So we were wondering why that is. Um, so yeah, this one I exp already explained. How do you marry your um, sort of uh, political stance with um, your 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 role in media like what's your personal opinion on being neutral or somewhat um yeah like what's what how do you see your own role in in society um audience adjustment i already explained it as well um this one we would be interested in what the environment is in france because chomsky is um, very focused on the us where you have particular think tanks that specialize on suing newspapers especially with the certain, let's say, liberal stance from the perspective of uh, Chomsky. How is that in France? Are there so similar, do you face similar cases where if you publish something against conservative or right politicians, do you face certain retaliation from a firm that might be focused on, on um, suing newspapers like yours? Um, then one important question is also, to what extent do you think it is scalable to other countries? And um, what does success of media part be thinkable if it was started today or is it, um, was it like a unique point in time? Thank you so much for your attention and um, yeah, let's have a discussion. And maybe th maybe this can also be the opportunity. Th there was a chart about uh, in the here, 
here. Maybe to explain how yeah. you, you, you bought yourself in a way, yeah. because the, 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 to understand the model of... Uh... So, uh, of course, yeah, we can start with that, uh, with our you know, financial structure. Uh, this structure, because you had before this slide, and you know, for you to to be clear about that, that was the the, the ownership in the beginning of Mediapart, but this is not the case anymore. So if you have to work on Mediapart, uh, make sure that uh, this structure is not valid anymore. And now the financial structure of Mediapart is this one. And uh, it was launched in 2019 and it was created because uh, the founders uh, and we'll, I will come to the, to, to, to the question about Edwin Plenet and the fact that uh, he's going to uh, you know, leave his um, function very soon. Um, so uh, it, was, it was created with the idea that the founders who put money in Mediapart in the beginning, they invest, uh, you know, with their own money in Mediapart in the beginning. They knew that they would not be there forever. And they were right to think so because now we just have uh, Edwin Plenel as a founder who is uh, still in Mediapart. All the other founders, they, um, they, 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 they left. And uh, why is it important? Because it's great for us not to have their money anymore in our company, because if uh, we still had their money in our company, uh, probably uh, their son or grandson or granddaughter would be our uh, next boss. And of course, nobody wants that, even them. I mean, that's why they decided, because that's the founders who decided their, uh, this uh, structure. So they thought that it would be very um, clear and important for the future to have a structure uh, totally independent from anybody, even their own uh, children and uh, grandchildren in the future. Uh, so that's the way it, uh, it worked. And so we have this um, FPL, which is a foundation basically, and uh, it has, uh, it keeps, um, you know, some money of media part in the SPIM, it's what we call our reserve. And if some of you uh, are familiar with, you know, the, the Guardian, they have the Scott Trust, uh, which is working a bit the same way. They put their money, I mean, the Guardian, the Guardian is putting its money in this trust, in a in kind of a fund, the trust fund, uh, which cannot be sold or bought by anybody for any time. The only thing that this money, the, there has to be money in, the, in this re reserve. It's like kind of a treasury, like a sec secret treasury in which you, when you have more money than what you need to, to work as you know, a, a company, you put this money in this treasury here in the SPIM. Uh, and uh, that's this uh, structure who keeps uh, the, the money for us and for, for the future. Right now, we don't have a lot of money in this structure. Why? Because we use what we had uh, in more uh, as a company to pay the founders back. So the founders, uh, we pay them back, so uh, they, they're out. So we have uh, for, for three or four years, uh, Mediapart has been paying back the founders from the money they, in they invest in the beginning in Mediapart. And now we're done with that. We paid back all, you know, what uh, we owe them. So, you know, uh, it's very clear. And now we are starting to putting the money we have in more. We don't need to invest for our own fun functioning. And so we're starting to put money in our treasury. And, you know, for the 10 uh, next years, what we want to do is to put, I don't know, 1 million uh, each year in this treasury to make sure that, you know, uh, if hard times come, that's, you know, important for us. I don't know if some, for, for, for some reason, we have, you know, half our subscribers 
uh, will come, uh, will, will, will quit, will quit, will leave Mediapart. Uh, or, I don't know, if the far right come in power, maybe it will be some kind of, you know, difficult for us, like uh, as a real opponent. So, uh, we have to make sure that we have uh, sufficient money in this, um, in this treasury, so we can, you know, go, uh, we can go through hard times. That's basically uh, it. And, of course, I want to come to all your very interesting questions in, uh, in the end, and also I want to, to tell Sofia, where is she, Sofia? You're here. That um, you're from U Ukraine. And as a journalist, I went and reported last year in uh, Ukraine for three, for, for three weeks. And it was um, such a, a shock for me to go there and report. I went to Kharkiv, Kharkiv and Izium, uh, which uh, had been uh, you know, under Russian control for a few months. And, it was just liberated by uh, Ukraine when uh, I was there, and it was very intense as a um, as a journalist to to be on this field uh, at um, at this moment, and you know to understand the the way people were resisting and um, you know very very brave and with no fatigue and um, very courageous. So really, I had uh, I have great memories um, about that. So with all, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to go through all your questions and please uh, don't hesitate to interrupt me if, you know, if it's necessary. Uh, I'm trying to do my best to answer your question. So the role of Edouard Plenel is still, uh, is still the president and uh, director of publication of Mediapart. So I don't, uh, what you told me that uh, he said that he was going to leave and yeah he said he was going to leave on uh, March and you know in the beginning of 24 that's what he said uh, what I read was 2017 mm -hmm. 2017 yes that was like I, I read like yes kind of okay uh, I would you know I would like to to, to read this article because uh, when he, I mean, I don't, I don't know if he said it public, uh, he, he said that publicly, but what he said publicly is that he would, uh, he would leave Mediapart on, uh, you know, the beginning of, uh, of 24 this year, and that's what he's planning to do. I can look it yeah, 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 of course, you can, you, we can have a look and, uh, and, 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 and share that. So he's, he's planning to leave and he organized that. And I think that's you know, very unique also because there's uh, so many founders and uh, president in media uh, who, uh, who wants to, to stay there forever, especially since Mediapart is very you know, attached to his uh, image, uh, is very attached to his uh, character, uh, you know, his role, his uh, public role. So uh, really he, he, he could want to stay uh, more in Mediapart. Uh, but still, he has values, and he thinks that you know, uh, you know, we are writing about certain things in the media, and he has to to be close to these values and to act as the values he's writing on in his newspaper. So he's uh, is going to resign, and um, and as I told you already, all the founders now, uh, except uh, Edoui. Uh, have left the 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 the, the media media part the, the newspaper, and they organize that because it's not just a way of saying okay I'm gonna you know I'm gonna retreat or whatever uh, ju you know just take the 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 uh, the, the, the new the new team uh, no you have to organize that to make sure that you know everybody is happy with uh, the way it's working. So it's, uh, it's, a long, uh, it's a long time we are working together to make sure that the team is ready to leave without the founders. So we're working on that for already two or three years. And you know, I think uh, probably now we are ready to, to go uh, and, um, and go without them. So, uh, motivation to publish. What? Yeah, the question is very interesting, of course, about you know objectivity or neutrality, uh, because I was I was talking about about facts. But probably you you understood also that I said that we assume, we we, um, we we said that uh, we um, we know that we want we we are engaged, we have values. We know which values are our values, and we share these values 
with you know, our readers and we are not hiding them these values. We revendiquer, pardon, je n'ai pas le mot, um, mm. we assume, non, ce n'est pas assume. On a assumé, pardon. Je, uh, we are proud of our values. And you know, we talk about these values we share, as I told you, we think we are progressive we, for emancipation. We, want, we fight for a more inclusive society, for real equality for all, you know, whatever age, gender, uh, race, um, origin, culture. So, you know, that's, I mean, not all newspapers, uh, you know, defend this, uh, these values. We fight for a society. Uh, in which everybody can find its place, it's, you know, the, 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 what, what, what everybody should do. Uh, we, we, we fight against uh, far right, for example, that's very different, uh, w something very different from us, uh, that distinguish us from other newspapers, is that in Mediapart we don't um, uh, do interview with far right. Uh, you know, uh, Le Monde is interviewing Marine Le Pen, Libération, I'm, you know, quoting uh, Libération, which is supposed to be, which is, you know, a leftist uh, uh, newspaper on, on the left in a political scale. Le Monde, which is more, you know, uh, moderate in a way. But this kind of person, they interview Marine Le Pen. We think that, you know, we is far right, we don't debate. You know, we think that we have to fight uh, far right. So that's, and we write about that. So that, that's what we think is our values, our engagement. But what we think is that we have to be transparent to our readers. Uh, we, if, you know, we, we know that we are people that come from a certain place, that have certain origin. We, we are aware of the context, you know, of who's talking, why we're talking, to whom we are talking. We ask this question to us every, every day. And we want to share that uh, with the public. But still, we think that we can work on facts. No facts, that's why I think it's very different because um, if you, uh, as I told you, we are not, we are engaged, but we are not activists. We are not from a camp like a, a party or a union or an NGO. We're not, you know, uh, our, our, uh, our camp is the camp, uh, you know, the, the, the right to know. That's, you know, uh, the, 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 the field in which we are. Uh, as I told you already, we think that uh, we can investigate on any institution, even NGOs, uh, with which maybe we can share ideas. As I told you before, I, w uh, I was working on migration uh, issues for, for 10 years. Of course, I was working a lot with a lot of NGOs, having a lot of stories, very interesting, sharing, you know, our values in terms of, you know, humanitarian, in terms of ethics, in terms of a lot of, you know, uh, how uh, we think that everybody is equal, that everybody uh, should uh, go from one place uh, to another without, you know, uh, being uh, troubled you know, and so on. But at the same time, I would have no problem to investigate this same ONG, uh, NGO if, for example, I understand that the boss is harassing his salaries. That's, you know, that's the point. If I was a militant, if I was an activist, I would not investigate this NGO because I, for ideological question, you, you say about ideology, we, we don't have ideal, we have values, we have uh, commitments, but we are not uh, activists. If I was an activist, I would not, um, I would not uh, publish information about a union, for example, because uh, I think uh, um, as, a, as a newspaper, I think that uh, it's very important to have a uh, good condition de travail, a, a way of work. I mean, that's something very important for me and for all the crew in Mediapart. We're very attached to that. But at the same time, if this union were close to, in terms of values, is, you know, uh, again, harassing or doing fraud, like, you know, against people who's giving money uh, to this um, institution, I would reveal it without any hesitation, really. And uh, already we published a lot of so story about, you know, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, about Fabien Roussel, uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, Les Insoumis, 
uh, Roussel Parti Communiste. Maybe we have, we share some values sometimes with these guys, but you know, they did something, I mean, in terms of uh, uh, right, something wrong, we have to publish about it. So that's the difference for me. Uh, and at the same time, I don't think we are natural and I don't think we are objective because that's not what we are. Uh, we are person, we are a group and we have values which distinguish us from other groups. Um, audience adjustment, what, what is it that? Uh, it's, it's all the question about, yeah, uh, would we publish this uh, story or not because um, are we uh, having bias, uh, uh, are we oriented because of our audience? As I told you, what's important for us is not the audience. So it's the subscribers, it's people who are reading us and who are paying for us. So we are not interested in how many people are going to click in this article. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, all journalists, they don't have access. I have because, you know, I'm in the board, so I want to know, who, uh, you know, what the, uh, to have as m much data as we need. But generally, they don't have access to uh, how many people goes how many people go on their articles? Like, is it like uh, 2,000? Is it uh, uh, 400? Is it 20,000? Is it uh, 40,000? So we won't have any reflection in terms of, you know, uh, having a different title or publishing another story because we knew it's working or whatever. We're not thinking, it's not at all the way we're thinking. And as I told you again, it's because of economic reason. We don't really care if the audience is like uh, going like very, very high on the special story. What's important for us is the number of subscribers we have. That's all. And we want to have one more, one more and one more. But maybe these subscribers, they won't read the article. I mean, I would not say I, I, I don't care because it's not true. I want readers to read us, of course, but I'm not interested in knowing if this story has much audience, has more audience than uh, this uh, other one. And it never, it's never a criteria for us to publish story or to, to, to give title because, of course, there's a lot of um, newspaper working a lot on uh, uh, the way they are uh, writing their title because they, it can, you know, get the way you put it. It can get much more uh, audience than an o another way. Of course, we know that uh, we're not naive, but it's it's not a question we have in mind because it's not interesting for us for you know our, the 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 way um, the way we work. Uh, and again, as I told you, how our motivation to public for me is that we think that uh, we have a public a role in terms of public interest to play in this you know uh, democracy that we are trying to construct which is not very solid at the moment and uh, are more and more fra fragile even in France so we think that we have a very specific role in to play in terms of that and uh, also, you said that uh, uh, the new stream, le, the flu, le, le, we, we're not, we don't have to to put on to, to publish a lot of story. Uh, and it's true that I didn't tell you, but for for you to know, we published around uh, ten to fifteen stories a day. It's not a lot, and uh, we don't want to publish more because we we need to have you know high value information study uh, stories. And that's what's important for us. And I don't think the, uh, you get more audience publishing everything. Like to be very exhaustive is not the way it, it should work because readers, they have too much information. What we understand from the readers, if they are tired, they have too much. They, you know, they, are, they face despair reading, you know, news, news. And I understand them in a way, it's kind of, you know, uh, tiring and despair, you know, the, uh, you, you can have despair um, the, uh, in reading news. But um, so what uh, our role is, is to select the interesting news, 
So think, we think that you know, people, they don't have time and we have to prioritize for them. So we have to get, okay, in a day, what's good for me is like, we have three or four stories concerning the public debate because of course we want, you know, we are a daily newspaper. So what we want is that people, they came to us every day, if, uh, to come to us to read us every day. And we want them to find in the newspaper of the day, you know, what's in the, um, in the air, to, uh, you know, concerning the public debate. Uh, of course, we don't want to publish the same story that the other one. We want to have, uh, you know, high value information because we think that we can put more context. We have more information about, you know, the history and uh, we can go in depth in this story more than, you know, our, so we, we have to, to distinguish ourselves every day uh, in every story, even for this story. And also we have five to 10 stories that are, are not in the agenda. We want to do the agenda. In, in fact, so we are not following the institutional uh, uh, agenda of you know French democracy. We want to, to create the agenda. So that's what always we have this. We call we call that contre-programmation. That what you know to to to, to reveal new things that are, were not on the field before, that were unrevealed, and we publish it. And we want to make story and you know the agenda change because of our story because of us. So. That's, you know, it, it, it's not putting us in a stream. We're not in a stream at all. We prioritize, we select like 15 good information necessary each day. And with that, what we hope is that people are going to come. And with that, if they have to choose, because of course I know all the readers and of course me also, I'm reading a lot of newspaper. Uh, because, well, that's my job, but uh, probably you, uh, 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 as young people who are, you know, born with mainly with the internet, you're uh, used to, to, to read a lot of, uh, you know, information coming from everywhere. My, um, my wish is that if you had some time to only choose one because you don't have time, because you have other things, you have book to read, like literature, I don't know, something else, you have to go in a museum, and think about something else and you have to, your work to do, your study to, you know, to work on. You have, you know, I think you have time just to read one newspaper and I want, you know, what would be great is it's us. And I think with Mediapart, that's what we plan to do. If you have to, you know, choose one, choose us because you have everything. You have, you know, the, the debate, the public debate, but just what's necessary because you don't know, you don't need to need all the noises and, you know, that's going to be confusing. People, you know, are, readers are confused about news because there's too much. There's a stream like coming every uh, seconds, like push and whatever. And there's no hierarchy, hierarchy in that. We, you know, we, that's what I, I try to say in terms of sense. We, we try to do investigation facts and give sense to what's happening. And give sense is like prioritizing and you know, context and uh, making things clear. We we're trying to do that, to, to clarify, you know, uh, thing. Um, so you, you, were, you was asking also, but uh, how do we choose to publish this or this story? Well, it's, you know, depending on what we have. Uh, for example, that's very important since we are uh, working on, you know, investigation. Um, to be honest, for example, there's a new government. Okay, so what we are going to do? We are going to go in their, you know, bio and see what they did, what they, what they, when they were, you know, prime, um, when they were deputies, MPs, what kind of law they voted, they passed. Uh, and we're going to go through that like very, you know, in the in a very close detail to understand to whom they are talking, uh, you know, what uh, their assets, uh, um, how they work, uh, with whom, you know, they are having links, how they get their money from, you know, money, always follow the money. That's a good way to understand the way thing works. So, 
uh, that's what we're going to try to think, how you know, the new party that are there, they are getting their money from. For example, I didn't tell you, but there's also one uh, story I'm very proud of. It's a story about you know, uh, Front National, far right in France. Uh, uh, and we, we revealed that the, this uh, party was um, financed by you know, Russian bank. That's interesting for us. Uh, to know that you know Marine Le Pen has been uh, her party has been funding by uh, Russia for many years, uh, so now it's not possible anymore, and that's another, another example of you know having impact on the field. After this uh, huge story mm -hmm. came out, it was in 2017. Then there had we had a law in France saying that you know party should not be funded by any bank out of uh, EU. So now it's not possible for any party in France to be financed by a Russian uh, bank, for example, Russian bank and state Russian bank, I should say. So uh, what do we publish? When do, do we publish? It's a question of you know, opportunity. We see the field as it is. There's a new government. Of course, we're going to go through all new guys and see you know, who they are, what they are, what they do, what they think. Uh, also, we have a lot of information coming from our readers or from coming from the outside, uh, we have a very secure way to get uh, information from the outside, uh, which means that if you um, if you give us information, you are totally hundred percent sure that it will not go out, uh, and you can be anonymous, and your security is going to be kept. For us, that's very important. That because. I mean, if we want to have information, we need to have insiders. That's really the, sh the more in important thing for us. So people, they need to trust us. It's true for our readers, independence, trust. And of course, we should not, for example, we have, maybe we can talk about that. We have a lot of trials because, I, uh, as I told you, there's a lot of people who don't like us. So we have a lot of trials and uh, almost 300 for 15 years. But we only uh, lost five out of 300, which is too much for me, five, because we should not lose. Uh, I think that maybe in the future, if we lose like a, a, um, a trial like that, on a, for example, if he would publish something um, uh, false, that would be catastrophic for us. We could, we could lose a lot of our readers. And I understand why, because our readers, that's why they come to us, because they trust us. That's the only thing. And for our sources, that's the same thing. They have to trust us. And that's why we are very inflexible about that, the way they can talk to us. Uh, we have all the methodology to make sure that um, they, 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 they will be in, secure, in security. I mean, they will be protected with us. And of course, we will never publish any name or whatever to, to the police or to whoever uh, could ask. Uh, us. And you know, it's a, it's a debate in France because there's a lot of uh, more and more journalists uh, in France who have problem with, uh, with security person, uh, security authorities trying to get information from, um, from them. So that's uh, what I can tell you. Um, would a success of Mediapart also think about mm. time, mm. digital times? Yeah, I don't think why not, uh, because you know the the method is clear, the model is clear. I think we had the chance we had in two thousand eight is that we were the only one to to have a paywall to to and because we understood really in the beginning that if we want to to publish high value, high value, value information, we have to pay, you know, readers for, for this information. And this, you know, the, the, the model, the, the independent, totally independent model. And so since we were the only one in the beginning, maybe we were kind of a, <laughs> a particularity. And of course we, ha we had to fight more, but uh, uh, on the other hand, it puts light on us. But you know, um, I think that you know the Betancourt story. You told you told about this story was in 2010 when we published you know the um, tapes. We published 
private tapes, uh, revealing things like uh, uh, public, uh, public interest thing about um, the, the, the way the Betancourt family was organized and, and uh, the way um, the, um, somebody around this family was trying to get money from this uh, family. Well, this kind of story, uh, if it had not been public before, we would publish it now, it would be like a boom. Uh, it's, you know, we, 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 we gain readers because of our huge stories, because they are never read that before anywhere else. So I think that's what we know. That's, you know, the, the trust we have in investigation, that we're not afraid of, you know, of uh, the people in power. And it's not only that we're not afraid, but we know that we are here to disturb them, you know, to, 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 to make them responsible for, 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 for what they do. So, and they know that. So I think it would, it, it would work. Maybe we would not have, not have this difference uh, because, I mean, no, now the model, the, the paywall model is pretty developed, uh, but still we, we, we could make the difference. Um, is it scalable in other country contexts? Well, I, 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 I'm not, I don't see, uh, I would be interesting in, in, you know, listening to you about the way it works in your own specific country. Um, I was very surprised because like in September, I went in a journalist like festival, journalist festival, it was in uh, Athens and uh, we were invited as Mediapart to talk about the model because in fact, the model is nowhere, like as pure, 100% one, one independent. We don't know that. And of course, all investiga investigators around the world and you know, in Europe, they want to understand how it works for us because you know, when you're just publishing uh, shit for, uh, you know, uh, in general, well, you don't really care being independent. It's not very uh, something you, you, you think about, but when you're an, an investigator, you need to be independent because that's what you do. You, you're putting people um, in difficulty. So you have to make sure that you're, uh, you, you're strong enough to, 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 to confront that. Um, and in fact, a lot of uh, a group, there's a, in, in Greece, there's a lot of group of investigators and they, are, uh, they get money from philanthropes, which can be okay, philanthropes, philanthropes are nice, of course. Uh, they are not, they, have, uh, they, they have a lot of money and you know, they, they, they want the good, uh, you know, the common good. So you, you, you can think it's okay, but it's not. For example, uh, I understand that um, uh, they need to, to, to sign a, a petition um, for um, Assange, Mediapart with other media. We had this petition uh, asking uh, Joe Biden to release, basically, mm. I'm a bit caricature, but that's it. We asked him to release uh, Julian Assange, saying that uh, he's a journalist. And in fact, he, he signed as a journalist in Mediapart in the beginning because we published one of uh, the WikiLeaks stories. And so we said that he's one of uh, us, one of our, our team. So you have to uh, free him. And, and these guys in uh, Greece, they were real gray, you know, tough journalists, investigators, uh, you know, having, you know, philanthropes, American philanthropes, uh, giving them money to work. And uh, they could not sign the petition because, you know, they were kind of leftist philanthropes. But still, it was a bit too, too hard to sign. So they could not sign that. For me, that's a huge problem. So that's what I think we need to be 100% independent. After, uh, uh, on the other end, I don't see why there would be places where it should not be possible to be as independent as we are. It's true that you have to invest in the beginning to make, you know, to create the structure and you have to get information, like huge information. That's true. <laughs> Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, my name is Owen from the UK. 
Uh, I have two questions, if that's okay. Um, first one, does your independence or your reputation restrict your access to particular people or institutions or are you, are you blacklisted by any companies or people like that? And also, um, I'm interested about the structure of your workforce, like your, your journalists, are they, do you employ them full time predominantly or do you have mainly freelance, freelance workers or on mm -hmm. fixed term contracts? So I'm okay. interested about that. Thank you. Um, we have, uh, when I told you the figures in the beginning, 65 journalists, it's staff. So they are working full time for us. Um, and we have also some freelancers uh, who work for us, especially around the world. We don't have established people around the world, so it's more freelance who work for us around the world. And when I say full time, it means that, I mean, most of our crew is doing investigation, but also being specialized in some um, in this field or in this other field. So it means that people, they can, uh, journalists, they can write on a story, they can work on a story like for six months. For, for example, the Sarkozy Gaddafi story, I didn't told you a story about this story, but it's huge because it's the way Nicolas Sarkozy, which was previous um, president, he financed is a presidential campaign uh, through uh, Libyan Sarkozy's uh, Gaddafi's uh, money. Uh, so this story, uh, for example, we work on this story for 11 years. I mean, of course, we didn't work uh, full time and, uh, on this story for 11 years, but we work on this story for 11 years, which means that some of our journalists, they're working on one story for six months, but at the same time, if there's, you know, a debate that they know about, they can, you know, write a one day story or a two day story if it's necessary. And you, 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 you manage your rhythm like that. You work, you always have, you know, like, it's like cooking. You always have like a very long, you know, stew, something like cooking, like very, taking very long to, to, to cook. And you have, you know, more uh, uh, shorter story to work on. I'm sorry, I forget, I forgot the other question it was. Oh yeah, well it was kind of hard in the beginning uh, to be honest because um, because people they didn't know you, they didn't know us and um, they were a bit afraid of us but now uh, we're really in the field and people are more afraid of us I would say and uh, we're talking about, I mean, in the huge, I mean, in everyday life, people, we can talk to everybody. They know us because we are here and we, we can hear about us in the media, in the other media, where, where it's thanks to it, we, for example, and, and whatever. Uh, but in the institution, in the minister for a ministry, for example, well, they, they are not so happy to, you know, to talk with us, so they won't give us like uh, exclusive information, which I don't think is exclusive if it comes from a ministry, uh, by the way. But, well, they, maybe they won't be very happy to talk with us, but they still, they want to know what we want because uh, they are afraid that uh, we have a story about them. So they want to make sure that uh, they can respond. And I didn't say that, but uh, in the way we are working, of course, in our methodology, we are always, you know, um, uh, having many sources telling us to, how to get to a fact, because that's very interesting about neutrality objectivity, uh, which I'm not considering, but facts. I'm considering facts. How do you get a fact? You get a fact by verifying your information. If you have one source telling you something, it's not a fact. It's starting to be a fact when there's many people telling you about that, because you have documents proving it. You have traces. You, you, I mean, there's many things uh, making a fact. It's not like it's not a pure thing like coming out of nowhere. It's something that, you know, get, you, you get it, you construct it because well, there's two, three, four person telling you about the same story. You've, you know, verification. And of course, at the end of that, uh, documents like for all the sexual and um, uh, sexual harassment violence, against women it's very long very long difficult story we have to 
we have to, to work on. And it takes like six months, nine months to, to work on one sto story. The Pardieu, for example, was a very, very long and difficult story because we have to uh, have many sources about each case. Even each case, you know, we have to find, you know, um, all the traces in your phone that these people, they, what he tell you, what he told you. If you talk to your neighbor when it happened to you, what you talk to your mother or to your friend or whatever, you you have to talk to hundreds of people, and that's starting to be a fact when you know it's verified like that. But at the end, you have to do the contradictory. Contra you have to co confront the person. Never publish without confronting the person. Sometimes it happened that we had the, your, your story; it seemed to be perfect, and. Finally, we were convinced because we understood that there was something we didn't get from the from the, the person we are putting uh, we are, we were accusing in a way. So we always have to do that, and also it's it's the law uh, because we know that we can go on trial, and if we are not doing the the contradictory, it's going to be against us, of course, and it is it's legitimate, of course. We have to be honest. We don't have to be uh, to be having any anonymous. Uh, uh, animosity. Animo uh, we don't have to be against personally against a person, and uh, we have when we are fi uh, in front of a, uh, of a, um, uh, in a trial. Also, we have to prove the judge that we are legitimate because it's of public interest. What you know, what we are revealing is of public interest, and in the in the Betancourt case, we have to deal about that because it was kind of. Private in a way, what we, what the story was about, but we didn't publish anything private, and we only published what was uh, of public interest about the story. We are not interested in you know private stories. That's not our business. I mean, uh, it's not of public interest. What interesting us is when it, it's going uh, to to when it's of public interest. Um, hello, hello. Uh, my name is Kara, I'm from Austria. Um, thank you very much, it was really interesting, very insightful. I have a question regarding the whole aspect for paying, of, uh, paying for journalism where I'm completely with you and understand that ensures your independence. However, I'm also always wondering how, um, how you then make it also accessible for people who really cannot pay for it, especially also in the sense of democracy. And I'm wondering if there's maybe a model or if you ever considered a model in the sense of if somebody can actually pay more to pay more, but then also giving uh, the option to somebody who can't afford it or you think that that's not even necessary. Mm -hmm. I would be very interested in your thoughts there. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's a very important question, uh, question of our accessibility. We want to make sure that everybody can read us and uh, of course can pay, you know, for uh, having and reading us. So that's why we have this price, five euros a month. And um, our general price, uh, it was nine in the beginning. Now I think it's 12 euros a month. And this five euro price, uh, it never went up. We kept it at five from the beginning until now. Uh, we didn't put the inflation or whatever. It stayed at five euros. So it's for whoever doesn't have the money to pay more. Um, so it's for students, it's for you know, people who don't have a job or people who, who, well, or who just feel they don't have enough money because of course we're not, you know, we're not um, policemen so, or we're not the administration so we don't ask for any documents uh, uh, specifying that you're a student or you're unemployed or whatever. It's a, a declaration uh, you, have to, you have to do. So, of course, you, you, you might tell me, well, five euros is still, um, is still too much uh, for, that is true, uh, five euros a month. Uh, some people, they don't have enough money uh, uh, when it's day 15, for example. So, even to, you know, to, 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 to buy food or, you know, buy their rent or whatever. So why would they put money in Mediapart? That's, a, of course, that's a good question. And I would like uh, people, uh, maybe I've, it make me think that maybe we can have a system um, because uh, you, we have also a system that if you really want to support Mediapart, uh, 
you can you can pay i think it's 15 uh, 15 euros or you can even choose no it's it's new you can choose between uh, 15 20 like if you're like a real super fan a real supporter so maybe we can invent something like saying okay these people um, they are paying for those who cannot at all pay but i don't understand i'm not sure how you you make the link you know well we have to figure out something for people who really cannot pay uh, five euros because as i uh, as I, I think we, we still have to have this paywall i think it's very important for people to understand that uh, mm, information real information has a value and also, as I told you, also, if you just go and visit our sites, you can have a lot of information for free. Uh, maybe not what you want to read, but a lot of our videos are for free and you have already a lot of content. Uh, so maybe you can look that uh, for the moment you really don't have money and then when you just have little money, enough money to, to pay five euros, well, you go, you go. But maybe we have to figure out a way, you know, for richer people to pay for you know, poorer people. That would be interesting. Hello. Hello. <coughs> I'm uh, I'm Bjarne from Germany. Um, I was wondering because I was not fully uh, uh, satisfied with the answer you gave on the motivation to publish uh, and on following your values when it comes to conflicts of interest. So it's thinking of a thought experiment that would like you to put you in a situation yeah. uh, where I think it's hard to decide on what to do. For example, uh, if we have the French presidential election, let's say, and there is the, going to be the election between uh, Marine Le Pen and uh, Mélenchon, for example, mm -hmm. and now you receive um, credible information on a scandal that Mélenchon might be involved in, now you would have to decide if it's a um, tight election, I would say, when do you release that information? If you release it before, just before the election, it will most likely tilt the results in favor of the far-right party. So how would you, how do your values guide you through such situations that I would be interested in? Yeah, very good question. Um, okay, let, let's take that. And also I want to tell you because uh, I didn't say that we're working with a lot of newspapers around the world and especially we have this group, this investigators uh, group, uh, group of investigation, collaborative investigation, it's called EIC and we'll work with Der Spiegel in this, um, in this group and we work with uh, Le Soir in Belgium, we work with uh, Italian newspaper media, with, um, with uh, people in Spain, in Denmark and uh, we are very proud of you know, this scale of uh, collaboration uh, with, our, um, <coughs> with our friend uh, around Europe. <coughs> well, uh, I think we would think of the time of publishing that, it's true because as you said, uh, we try to make sense and we are aware of you know, uh, our responsibility. Uh, great power in, implies a uh, huge responsibility, isn't it? Uh, uh, I think this uh, formula comes from the revolution, the French Revolution, by the way. It's not only you know the Spider-Man um, <laughs> quote. Uh, well, uh, I think we would think. It, I think it depends on the risk it would uh, imply for you know political um, and also of the dangerousness of, you know, if for example Mélenchon uh, uh, was doing like something very incredibly uh, dark or uh, um, um, severe. severe or whatever, I think we would think about all that. And uh, sometimes people, they, 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 um, critics, uh, they critics us because they say that we're putting, we're trying to make um, stories about thing that we publish the first one and then the second one and then you know to go up and up and up with the story which is uh, most of the, the time not true sometimes we have to put it in two times because we have too much story to reveal in, uh, in once and sometimes it's true I have to admit uh, we know that we publish something and we know that there's gonna be a certain reaction uh, so we keep because we have the answer for after uh, to 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 to, you know, to 
to reinforce what we have to say. Sometimes we think, we think <laughs> like that, but it's not true that we're thinking in terms of strategy like that. I mean, we're not like, um, we're not so Machiavellic. Maybe we should be more, in fact, but we're not like that. And it's some, most of the time, when you publish one story, uh, it gives ideas uh, for some sources uh, to, to call you because they had this <laughs> story, they had something and they want to share also. So the story comes, you know, uh, bigger and bigger because more and more people come out and want to share and uh, to be sources. But to answer your story, I mean, that's, that would be a very difficult case. In media part, we think we talk about everything. We, the kind of place where we have a lot of debate, we're really collective. And uh, I mean, there's no like a theoretical answer for your question. But of course, um, we would uh, think of the risk of the political risk. We uh, would consider the gravity of what we should, uh, would publish, uh, and uh, what we, we should decide in, um, in, in, you know, depending on, uh, on that. We, we, we put that in the balance and we would uh, figure it uh, out. But of course, it's true that we know that we have a huge responsibility. And mm -hmm. also, we can go on trial. I mean, uh, we, which means that we cannot do uh, uh, whatever we want. First, it's a question of trust. Uh, you know, in, in front of our readers. So, you know, we have to make sure that what we publish is true. And also, our responsibility go, goes on, uh, on trial. So we can be um, sued. sued, but also condemned. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, if, uh, if, 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 if uh, we're sued and uh, we're not uh, proving that we're uh, having published something uh, right. So that's a responsibility, we're taking it, but we know that, we're, you know, uh, kind of, uh, let, lucid about that, uh, fair, and uh, we can go on trial to respond from our, you know, publication. Hi, um, my name is Philip, I'm from Germany. Um, before coming here, I did some yeah, not similar to your project, but we tried to do a similar newspaper project in uh, Germany and combining economic journalism and left-wing journalism uh, in Germany, and we failed quite. <laughs> Obviously, we went bankrupt last summer. Uh, so my question is, do you think that um, this kind of project need like a newspaper approach of like a big newspaper with many topics, with many like covering all the stuff in the country or do you think that also works for a really specific topic of, for example, economic journalism? Yeah, I think it would be, uh, our model would be perfect uh, for, you know, very, I mean, economic, you can publish anything about economy. I mean, it's uh, everything. Basically, it's not uh, only, uh, you know, companies, it's uh, the way people live. It's everyday life economy. So, I mean, you would have a lot to publish about that. And it's uh, more specific. So maybe it could interest, uh, maybe at the beginning, a community which would be um, uh, smaller, smaller than ours. Uh, since we think we are general news, we are published general news. But I think it depends on the quality of what you're publishing, basically. And you have to make yourself known by huge stories and in to, to make uh, the, the audience understand that you're valuable and you're uh, something, you, a place where you want to go and to read and whatever. So you have to make the difference. Uh, but uh, I think it, it, it could work. Yeah, of course. So do it. Start again, maybe. <laughs> So uh, my name is Stefan and I'm from Denmark, so I'm glad for that country remark you came with earlier. And I would like to mention, you probably know Mess Brugger. He made like the mole and yeah, he's opened a very similar project in uh, just because you were looking for an example. Um, I wanted to say like, number one, I applaud, Ness, uh, of course, the quality over quantity approach that you're having here with your news uh, production, but that also necessitates the need for credibility. So therefore, if you did not post upon the people that that you are like have your 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 what you call it editorial bias towards, you would lose credibility. So, so when you're painting a very noble picture, it's also sort of you need to 
publish the other side or else you're going to lose credibility. And to the second thing I also quickly want to mention, you're, you're talking about libel now, like writing something that's potentially, potentially untrue, uh, and you, they need to prove animosity that you're publishing with animosity. Isn't this a little bit problematic when you are very clearly stating uh, that you have maybe a harsh term, but enemies? You're very clearly stating that there are individuals that you are selectively trying to attack. Isn't this like very much opening you for this libel attack that you've been talking about a couple of times here? Thank you. I don't think I said uh, about individual, they were enemies. I think uh, far right is our enemies. <laughs> the targeted demographic that you have an interest in diminishing their influence over society. I think I would formulate your assessment. I'm not sure I get what you, what you, what you want to know. Uh, please. That's a stated animosity. That's pure animosity. Yeah, and that's yeah but far right is a kind of a concept. So we're not going to be attacked by a concept. you understand me? It's not an individuality uh, concept. No, but a conservative person could say that your newspaper is specifically targeting them because of their ideological beliefs. No, it's anonymity against the person who's uh, suing us. Uh, far right will never, as a, as a concept, will never suing, will never go on trial and against us. Yeah. No, no, please. I'm, I'm saying a, a person uh, that has a far right opinion, yeah. conservative, would be able to say because you're targeting people that have conservative no, because this person has to has to, to prove that we have uh, anonymity against uh, them as a person, and it's not the same. Uh, I think it, I mean I'm not uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I think it would be quite easy for us to make a difference, and we're very clear about that because we think it's you know uh, far right is a danger in our society, and it's a danger that is you know getting closer and closer, and again, again we think that we have to be clear about that uh, and it's important for our readers to know who we are and what we fight for and you know our transparency is our um, is our friend in this field is is a uh, is uh, supporting us okay <laughs> thank you so much i think i'm now handing over to the last question i got the honor to moderate as well so I think it says, or anybody else? Okay. Um, hello, I'm I'm Celso. I'm from Portugal, and so every um, whenever I come across the um, um, economic discussion about traditional media, um, always it's always the crisis in the media. How? Um, Typical traditional news outlets cannot survive based exclusively on um, on users alone, and even um, with advertisements, still uh, somewhat of a very hard time making making profits. Right now in Portugal, we're having a very very big crisis associated with the final with with, well, with um, the collapsing media scene, the no new scene, so to so to say. But what I was thinking here is that. From your presentation, I'm very. It's very clear that it is possible to uh, to sustain um, user finance, uh, reader financed um, uh, newspaper. Yet, uh, almost all of them are failing at that, and I'm sure they also have fairly intelligent people trying to get themselves out of that hole. Why do you think that is the case? Why do you think that most newspapers don't? You can't um, finance themselves. Um, first of all, it's uh, it's like Der Spiegel. We have uh, our uh, our colleague from L'Espresso in po in Portugal uh, working with uh, working with us. Uh, I mean, in France, uh, some other models are working. Le Monde, I think, is working pretty well. Uh, I'm not saying our model is the only one to to function. Uh, I'm saying that uh, our, <laughs> our is functioning, and I'm very happy about that. And I want it to be, you know, sustainable as as long as, as it can. And of course, it's true that because now, in terms of uh, readers, in terms of you know paying readers, 
In France, we are the third after Le Monde, Le Figaro, and now there's Mediapart. So they are some kind of concurrent for us. Uh, so we have to make sure that if some people who wants to read Le Monde, I'm not sure people reading the Figaro, uh, which is more on the, on the far, uh, on, the, on, the, on the right, sorry, uh, for, for those who don't know, but uh, people reading the Figaro would read Mediapart. But maybe some people reading Le Monde would, you know, maybe read Mediapart. And, you know, what I'm going to try to do is to make sure that if they, as it, if they can, you know, read both, I prefer them to read both because, you know, I'm for, plura for, for plurality. But if they have to, to choose, I would prefer them to, to choose um, Mediapart. But uh, our model is sustainable, but well, we have to work on it because we have 220,000 uh, readers. We have to keep them, and it's you know it's a everyday uh, task. I mean, it's uh, they can leave sometime. We we never know, so that's why we have to make sure what we are publishing makes sense, where is true, uh, is you know uh, reliable, mm. uh, is uh, you know important. Uh, you know, so we have to work on that every day. Uh, and I, I think for the future, why I'm uh, kind of optimistic is that I think that the um, issues we're work, working a lot on, like ecology, like um, far right, like uh, police violence, like um, sexual violence against women, I think that these kind of um, issues interest a lot of younger audience. So I don't see why these people they will not choose us in a way or another uh, when they have enough money to, 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 to pay for and, and, and read us. So that's why I'm pretty optimistic. But really concerning the other uh, media, um, I think also some media are not working well because, you know, uh, billionaires or owners of this media, they are not, um, they are just think in terms of influence, but they are not real uh, editor or real uh, business editor, I would say. Uh, they are not in this field because they are interested in publishing, in editing. They are just there, like Bolloré for me. Maybe sometimes it's going to, you know, um, fall out because <coughs> he's not a real businessman in terms of being interested in the, in the field of media. He's just trying to get influence which is, I mean, he has a lot of money, so maybe we, we, it's going to be long before, uh, you know, it, it, it comes apart. But they <coughs> don't have any idea in terms of news, in terms of information, in terms of, you know, how to structure a field. So um, I think maybe that's why sometimes some people uh, or some newspapers are falling because... Um, uh, they are owned by people who do arms, who do uh, building, who, you know, construction, who do you know other other things, and it's not the same. You know, you you, you cannot do arms. You know, if, you know, you cannot do the you know the war and being at the same time a good editor. I think it's not the same. Uh, you know, the work. So basically, I think maybe in France that would be the problem because you know honor. They are doing so many other things that are not uh, focused on uh, publishing and uh, edition. And maybe that's why the structure are not so strong, um, I would say. Thank you so much. That, thank you so much for the very inspiring and insightful presentation. Thanks for answering all our questions, I guess. And I think these were really nice concluding remarks as well in answer to the last question. So thank you very much. Thank you.